Oh, hi, everyone, and welcome aboard. I'll be your Captain Hillian today, along with... First Mate Rick here, at your service. And, uh, yeah, we've been doing a lot of these <laughs> empty starts lately, but this one is intentional, well, for other reasons yeah, this time, because we are doing a first with this one, in that, well, let me turn that on and this on. This is our first uh, Showcase Sunday, where we are showing a console game. Wait, is it? Uh, we have done... Uh, we have done... Uh, now, I'm, now I'm confused, but this, at the very least, this is the first one with this capture card. We have done... Uh, the, uh, we have done at least one with... Uh, VR, but maybe yeah. one. We also, also done on the a Metroid on one of the older consoles. Uh, that was more that we want. We played. No, I played that, and you uh, watched that. I don't know if we did that on stream. Uh, uh, no, no, not Metro Dread. I mean the other older Metroid. Yeah, that that was. Where you actually um... streamed from your sofa or bed. <laughs> All right. That, oh, yeah. That that was. Uh, we did show that one. Uh, or at least we did a test stream with that, so in a way that also counts. Uh, but yeah, we were testing the Wii with that, I believe, or the, rather the Wii U, which was emulating the Wii. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think that was probably a Sony dedicated two hours just for that game due to the, all the hassle. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, uh, for anyone... Uh, for, <clears throat> To explain, on Showcase Sunday, we try four, uh, typically four games, sometimes less, sometimes more, uh, for about half an hour each to see if they're any good for streaming or not. And, well, the first one is this, Asterix and Obelix XXL3, the Crystal Men here. Oh, so, dear gods. Uh, yeah, I, I actually have a bunch of other old, much older Asterix uh, games, but none of those wanted to work on the computer or with OBS. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> First console. Okay. Let's start up a new game. Or, oh, that will overwrite. Uh, well, it wasn't too far in anyways. And it'll... But it, it'll make me redo thing. It, it'll make it'll help me relearn the controls, anyways. So let's start the timer and start this single player. I saw an animal name, Aurox. <laughs> All right, at this era they were not extinct yet. Uh, technically, but yeah. Uh. I know of I well this is the third game in this XXL series with uh, Asterix and Obelix. I don't have any of the others. The other well most of the other games that I have of them were from the freaking 90s. So that also helps explain why they don't really work. Wait, that gives that for back? Bloody heck. Yeah. The year is 50 BC. Gaul is entirely occupied by the Romans. Entirely not quite. One small village of indomitable Gauls still holds out against the invaders. And since it's a glorious day, let's go and pay them a visit. Here's chief vital statistics, minus his usual bearers. Cacophonix the Bard is busy composing the kind of ballad his mother once softly sang to him. <laughs> and <Getifix laughs> and being the target practice. is feeding his doves. It's a picture-perfect day. The cloudless sky shows no sign of the terrible events brewing on the horizon. The trials and tribulations that yet again await our friends, Asterix and Obelix, the two most valiant warriors in the village. And where are our heroes exactly? Garum lupus. There's no need for language like that. No, Obelix. Garum is a condiment, and lupus is the name of the manufacturer. Okay. Right. Let's head back to the village and see how Getafix the Druid is doing. Our Druid Wait. was much straighter since he stopped falling out of trees. Or getting crushed by minis. Isn't that right, Obelix? Hmm? Yeah, what, what was the dog's name there? Edifix. 
or at least it is in unlimited in the Dutch version. It is Edefix. We'll have to double check uh, once it, it's it's the same in again. Swedish. We also call him Edefix, and I feel so sorry. It's, it's a doggy fix. <laughs> okay, we'll have to double With check that. That's why I had the rights got very confused if they were so uncreative. Uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> most of the characters, or at least the, most of the village's characters, and well, a bunch of other characters, uh, their names are. <laughs> they're just puns. Cacophony fix. <laughs> Cacophony. And vital statistics. <laughs> Yeah, two of them end in X, and I thought a bit. Oh. I didn't realize that as a kid at first, but after a few years, I realized, wait, all their names end in X, and I also realized they were doing that same weird yoke with almost every culture except Vikings. Then they made fun of many Vikings had animal names. <laughs> okay, and. Um yeah, the druid is literally called Get a Fix. Like a fucking drink. <laughs> like a freaking uh, drug dealer. And yeah, I'm sure that his name is Swedish, actually, now. And yeah, th this game is a. Uh, it's a. Yeah, it's an isometric, isometric brawler. Okay, tight squeeze, only asterisk, asterisk can fix into certain places. Uh, interact. Okay. And then with this one, yep, we swap to Obelix, and we do the same here. Okay. The audio is likely to be somewhat low or off. That's because, uh, yeah, I, I, have, I haven't managed to do a full test here yet. Uh, jump rock to rock with ast Asterix. Uh, okay. <laughs> I tried jumping with Obelix, and he just uh, he thrust into the next <laughs> zip code. Over to you, Asterix. Oh, okay, that is their jump. They, they just <laughs> they just dodge forwards. Okay. And yeah, Obelix will fight along as well Asterix, most of the time. I'm hungry. Obelix, do you ever think of anything else? Nope. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, boar meat restores health. And they will try to run away, as you can see, because <laughs> these two have been terrorizing the boars here for ages. It's only I'm hungry for boar. <laughs> yes, I eat uh, a wild boar before. It is good, especially when it's marinated honey and beer. Let's see. Special hits. Okay, just <laughs> spin to win. Yep, and <laughs> just send one into orbit. <laughs> Return to sender. <laughs> I forgot how much I love that. Uh, and they actually come down. Yep, and get oh, buried. <laughs> oh, hello. Pigs can uh, fly. My... Oh, bloody heck, hell. Uh, my introduction to Axe to Blix was through the movies. Okay. But they have been. But they came out first as court. Uh, no, uh, as comic books. Uh, yep. My head. Both my mother and dad had some. Yep, my father had a few. Uh, we still have some around here, I believe. Uh, my father gave up a big chunk of his comics collection, you know, comics and strips. Uh, so I actually don't know what we do and don't have anymore. Hello, dear druid. Hello, my friends. And how was the hunt this morning? That's just a thing, Getafix. I've been feeling a little weak lately. I could do with a boost. Obelix, I don't know if I've already told you this, but I can't give you any magic potion. You fell into some when you were little and... Thief! Thief! Look, it's Postal Districts, the <laughs> postman. What's wrong, <laughs> Postal Districts? In the forest! Somebody <sighs> stole my bag in the forest and it had the entire village's post in it! Letter thieves? That's got the Roman stamp all over it. Why would the Romans want to steal our post, Obelix? Don't talk rubbish. Those Romans want us dispatched. Plus, they always follow orders to the letter. If that's not proof, I don't know what is. It felt like the sky was falling on my head. I fainted. 
And when I woke up, I was sitting against a tree. Sorry, but what you're describing sounds like sleeping on the job, Postal Districts. I'm serious. I was attacked. My head's still spinning. Hmm. This post-pinching story is very odd. Asterix, Obelix, go and have a wander around the forest and see what you can find. Uh, yeah, for those who are uh, unfamiliar with Asterix and Obelix, uh, Getafix has a uh, has a magic potion that he gives that gives the basic <laughs> basically turns all anyone who drinks it into Superman minus the flight and the sight and the laser eyes for a good while. Uh, that is how Asterix, well, with his uh, noodle arms, is able to send Romans into orbit. <laughs> And that also and... is why uh, they never give Obelisk any for he fell into the damn cauldron as a kid. Yeah, so he has it permanently. I, I don't know why uh, precisely they won't give it, but I'm guessing if <laughs> Getafix expects that if he gets it again, he might explode or something. Yeah, and he only wants more because he apparently find uh, uh, was because he wants to be stronger or he actually found it tasty. Uh, tasty. It Obelix, it's about food all, at all times. Big enough. That's a basket, so probably a full heal. I think we have a different name for a druid. Uh, do I worry about the way they just alter a little bit to, to keep the pun? Maybe we call him... Yehefix? He sounds like a very short version of... Uh, uh, no, but... Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to Faster investigate it at some point. Like I'm unsure. Okay, uh, hello, what's that? A laurel box? Uh, uh, I would not be surprised if they altered his name just because of... Uh, it felt like a bad uh, drug reference or something. Yeah, I, 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 it has been quite a while since I've, since I've read any of the comics, but I'm pretty sure most of the characters' names have been changed, so the puns fall short. And we not can't actually roll fast far enough to get that it seems. Oh, I saw that. Some extra helmets. Uh, these are look to be a currency, but I don't know exactly. Do you think well, we'll, we'll probably be buying Romans objects. Obelix? Oh yes, it's Roman season in the forest this time of year. It's always Roman season in this place. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I, I I like that an axe marks the spot where they land. Hello. These mushrooms sure are funny. It looks like a little village. Now, one day I saw a striped cat in a tree. A second later, it just vanished into thin air. <laughs> That's Alice in Wonderland. Look, Robert. He sure is running fast. He must be late. More Alice. <laughs> okay. Why? Why is there a random villager making <laughs> Alice in Wonderland references? I was gathering mushrooms when I thought I heard a moment patrol running away. Hunting for mushrooms requires many qualities. Skill, memory, trickery, and speed. Of course, speed is the most what? important quality. Uh, why? Wait, what? My daughter comes uh, with me often when I go mushroom hunting. She likes to observe animals in nature. Are you misunderstanding what mushrooms are? Oh, wait. No, this is not Guild Wars 2. Or Shangra Marsh in Warcraft, so no. These should be regular mushrooms. Okay. Deal with these. We ring. Well, it said it earlier. We no, we use up energy when we use these attacks, but we regain it by hitting our enemies. Pretty basic brawler stuff. Oop, and we have archers to deal with now as well. Oop. Not entirely sure what I act, what I did there. It looked like I did some sort of combat role. <laughs> okay, that that is a bit of a minor point against that it doesn't highlight enemies that are hiding behind things. It can always get really annoying if you're trying to <clears throat> fight something but you can't actually see it. Yes, yeah, so especially when it's one of those you no can't progress onto you have defeated them all. In the air. Okay, I see now. We have four special moves. We have the spin one that we did. We have the one that launches them into orbit with X. And there's a roll. 
and a double punch. Okay. Okay. It, it, as he's Obelix said, I actually automatically started to look up on screen to see if there was actually some board in the sky. Okay, that's a charge. Okay. Probably better for dealing for... Well, <clears throat> with groups of enemies. And yeah, these basic Romans will just go down in a few hits. Their main strength, I believe, in... Well, in general and in yeah, this game is their numbers. Let's see. Okay. Asterix, come and see. Dogmatics has found something. Look, Dogmatics, what? Marble. It's Postal District's post. They seem to be leading to the Compendium Camp. Wait for me here, Asterix. I'll go and fetch the post. I won't be long. Hang on, Obelix. What if we tried asking the Romans politely for once? When we arrive at the camp, we could try knocking beforehand. That's what I was planning to do, Asterix. As soon as I arrive, I'll knock the guard down before heading in. I'm not sure that counts as being polite, but if you say so. <laughs> really? Dogmatics? <laughs> Uh, at the start screen, it, they call them Idafix. <laughs> it might be a typo goody, or... Goody, goody. Romans! Uh, that, that's a bit of a big change for <laughs> a typo. But yeah, it could be maybe... Yeah, something you said like earlier that it might have something to do with avoiding... Yeah, I don't, I don't see what... I don't see why Idafix or Idafix might get censored or something. I, I, I'm suspecting there's only some port of Europe. Yeah, I know uh, over they, here in the comics he was called Idafix. Yeah, I, I think it might be a case of. Uh, they might just, yeah, they might just call him Dog Magazine English. Could but, be. But, I mean, this said, but, didn't they say that verbally now? It, it, Eat a fix? Hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's keep our ears out to double crow. If they do say eat a fix, then I don't know what happened. For and there's the nothing wrong with eat a fix. Yeah, I'm, try I'm pressing the button, but he's not actually doing anything. Dogmat- Yeah, like I said, uh, I like Edifix oh, more than Asterix? Dogmatics. Dogmatics? Do you smell what I smell? Those two bullies are here! Like Help me! Oh. He said Dogmatics. Okay. I think in this case of... Uh, in in English, they call him Dogmatics, but the rest of us just call him Edifix. Good chance of that, yeah. I'm guessing those levels are going to be upgrade materials or something. They haven't said anything about, well, using all of the helmets we've been gathering around. <laughs> 243. Quick, let's not waste Bloody any time. Heck. I'm in the mood for making Roman squeal. <laughs> okay, Obelix. Oh, I, I have missed these two. And the cartoons, are, are pro they're probably still fun today. Uh, yeah, they are just hard on slapstick and all, but that's not to say that it's bad. Tom and Jerry are still classics as well. Yep. No. Mm. I think the live action ones were like, like the first live action was good, but the other ones were a bit more hit and miss. Uh, I, I think I've seen the live act. Actually, I think I might have seen that both the live action and animated versions of uh, <clears throat> Asterix and Cleopatra, and I don't, I don't have bad memories of either. But that was over 10 years ago. Yeah, I, same. I don't have bad memories of either. Just remembering there was more laughter from the animated ones. Yeah, because they can just do more with those. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, yeah. It, I think the graphics might look a bit better for you and the stream because it's a bit more compact. With me, it's a bit stretched over, well, a, a monitor that it wasn't, uh, the size that it wasn't supposed to be on, probably. <clears throat> because this is, yeah, I haven't actually here. stated, but it is running on the Switch, which it, it isn't the most powerful of the console out there, but uh, it being, well, it, it literally being a tablet in one form, it adds a lot to it. 
Yeah, it, and it's still impressive, like... It, as an example, you can't buy extra memory for it. I, I bought yeah. it from my Switch for about 260 gigabytes. And that little ship is the size of my pinky nail. Yeah, the SD cards today are really tiny for how much they you know, give. Yeah, and that's impressive. For I, as far as I know, if you buy it for a PC, it's not going to be that small. Yeah. Still, so, uh, <clears throat> SD cards, uh, or SSD cards, really, are uh, getting... Well, they aren't really getting smaller, but they are getting more bang for how much space they take up. Yeah, but still, considering what a Switch... What they had done with the Switch so far, it is impressive. Yeah. It makes you wonder... If they do a Switch 2... How impressive that might be! <laughs> yeah, with they're yeah, they're probably going to stick with the switch for quite some time. And how the hell are we go, supposed to get? Oh, there's a switch here. Yeah, <laughs> the and the, the phones are rolling in. The, the only criticism I have for switch is battery is life. Cartridge? That bad realizes it not being an issue. I keep my having my plugged in in, in its uh, charger so I play through the TV. <laughs> but more is also the size of the game cartridge test. Like they get getting smaller and smaller. Like they also uh, the size of your pinky fingers nail. Yeah, it's easy Actually, to lose them. And I almost yeah, lost like, eight games because I put them into storage things and forgot where I put those. Yeah, again, impressive because you read them so much, but maybe don't make them that small. Hmm. Or if they're gonna numbers. keep with the trend and make them smaller and smaller. Actually, can you even make something practical that's smaller than already than that? If that was a fail. I was expecting that to fall down. Yeah, there is a certain limitation where it won't be able to anymore. Yeah, where you won't yeah. be able to make it smaller more. Yeah, I say this. If they kept it in the size of like a Game Boy Advance cartridge, then bloody hell, you probably could do a lot of power into that with current tech. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like they probably should have. But I think they wanted to make it portal as possible, but the. Like, Nintendo, they know their stuff, but they have done a lot of trial and error, like... Yeah. Virtual they tend Boy. to be the most experimental, which, well, has its ups and downs. But even with, even with the down ends, they can still make a... Not, not really a profit off of it, but, but not in that way at least. But they can still use the failures to learn from. Like, without the Wii U, we wouldn't have the Switch. Indeed, I was just bring up that as an example. But I didn't even know nobody Wii U was for a while. For I haven't heard of it until I think you mentioned it. I think so, yeah. No, wait, actually, I, mean, I think uh, first I've heard of Wii U. I just thought, right, it's uh, just a it's a Wii but slim or something for you know, crazy slim and all that. Yeah, that that is something I've heard that. Uh... <laughs> they failed on the marketing with. Yeah. Um, s s yeah. Then we also have Switch Slim, or what it was called, which was apparently also a negative received. But that's a Switch that's even sl smaller, rather more flat, but a stronger screen. Yeah, I know there were. About three ver variants of the uh, the 3DS, I think. There was the 3DS uh, without the folding thing and without the 3DS. Then there was the ex uh, the extra large version, I think as well. Some games supposedly only work on that, but I don't know specifically if that is true or not. Ooh. Okay, one of six dice. I guess the bigger one was more powerful version. Yeah, it, it also had a bigger screen and, okay, a bigger spawning tent. I just hope uh, Nintendo that uh, 
what they learned from Switch and maybe do so they have bigger like they, they give draw the big smaller like you know the thing that you put the cartridge inside that is really big uh, it isn't too big but uh, if, yeah if, if they, they compare to the cartridge at least yeah if they um, if they yeah, I'm not sure if a Switch 2 would really be the best way to name it, especially since, well, this thing, how things on marketing failed with uh, the Wii U. But whatever console they go for next, or whatever they call it, I do hope they basically make a Switch, but uh, be uh, bigger, with uh, bigger, uh, bigger screen, bigger, uh, yeah, bigger cartridge size. Uh, and less freaking drift on the controllers. I'm currently using a third-party wireless controller because Wait, what? Yeah, one of my Switch, you know, one of my uh, Joy Cons has uh, quite a bit of drift on it. Mine just works fine. I, I, here's the thing: I have to compliment on. Um, like they last for a few hours. Quite like eight hours or something or more, and it only takes them. 10 to 20 minutes to fully recharge. For my PlayStation controllers, which I fix so they can last for about 20 hours, they lost for. They need to still recharge for two hours. Okay. So I have to switch between two controllers each day. But for Switch, if I'm about to go and eat, Connect them to the, the uh, switch itself, and while I cook and eat, then I finish eating, and they are both finish recharging. Okay, we are taking quite a bit of damage here. Luckily, food is plenty around as well. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's a good example of what I, uh, another thing I'm impressed by the switch sense. Yeah, you have to agree. If you control is about to die of uh, to the battery, you only need. Again, like, wait like 10, 15 minutes and not two hours. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think I have heard something about that they uh, supposedly fixed the Joy Con issue, or at least on the newer uh, releases of it. Uh, and from what I actually hear, the, the, the solution. You know, that's the timer going off, but we can go a little bit longer to finish this level and this talk. Um, yeah, what I heard... Uh, t yeah, yeah, oh, I didn't mean to do that, which is basically a super mode, though it doesn't make us invulnerable as we were taking hits during the fight before. Uh, yeah, there's... Uh, there is a little bit of a shield missing underneath the controllers. So if you put... I. It has been a bit since I've seen this, but supposedly the easiest way to fix that is to open up the controller that has drift, and then put a bit of uh, tin foil, like a, a nail-sized uh, a bit of tin foil underneath or between it and a certain circuit or something, and then it would then it should work without any drift at all. All right, I, I guess I have the new models for. I, I... Yeah, they just brought my Switch last year or something, so I probably have the new models. Yeah, uh, mine is from the first Mar uh, release still, I believe. I, I can never remember when I buy stuff, uh, in part because I throw out re uh, receipts and such. I can hear you up there. I usually oh. save those. I do know uh, when I bought my PlayStation 4, it was the first generations for... I just wanted to program a... Uh, specific game and I learned that it's usually probably better to wait for generation with of PlayStation says the first generation of PlayStation 4 apparently had heating issues I I, I dusted out mine it works better now but I have been hearing like that the, the later models and PS Pro like one of the biggest thing big PS4 Pro was improved Power, but also improved fanning system. Okay. So uh, yeah, when I play, when I gonna buy, when or if I get a P PS5, I'm probably gonna 
what if there's a PS5 Pro or something? I have heard that they are working on a a version two at least at the moment. Mission accomplished, Obelix. We've got the post. Now we can head back to the village. Did you see that, Asterix? I politely knocked the Romans down, and they all told me where they'd hidden the post. You were right. <laughs> all we had to do was ask nicely. But we still don't know why the Romans stole the post bag in the first place. It doesn't bode well. Plus, I don't know if you noticed, Obelix, but the Romans have added even more legionary posts than before. So they've increased the posts, but hidden the letters. These Romans are crazy. <laughs> Some some of these this word play. <laughs> I almost forgot. That, like I, I think some of these I jokes it's went over time. my head as a kid. But mm. good gods! Yeah, there were a bunch of puns earlier as well with uh, when they were talking about the post being stolen and such. Oh uh, yeah. That their stamp all over it. My I, I can see you streaming this. <laughs> Yeah, the Here, combat is fixed. simple. There's something for you. Uh, a bit annoyingly so, so we probably put it on easy. Incredible! A message from Avina. Avina Gandia. Is that a friend of yours, Getafix? Yes. Avina Gandia is the high priestess of a land far, far away. The island of Thule. We met a very long time ago in Barcina in Hispania. We were exchange students in Iberia. Back then, in the good old days, my friend, the, Stone the Age. druid IP Fix, introduced us. Ah, oh, Avina. Avina, she was so... She was so... How can I explain it? She was just... We get the idea. So, what does Avina Gandir want from you after all these years? Hmm. Hang on a bit. Let's see. By to Tartis. Avina, she needs help. She's in danger. She's worried the Romans will kidnap her. That's why the Romans stole my post. They wanted to make sure you didn't get the call for help, get a fix. Yes, we should help her. But how do we track her down? She's probably already being held captive by the Romans by now. She could be imprisoned anywhere in the Empire. Don't worry, friends. We'll find Avina using the Snuffle Helga Yokel. The what? Yeah. Isn't that the thing we ate in Belgium? With the Menope. The Snuffle Helga Yokel is Avina's sacred rock. The one and only thing capable of showing us the way. To understand, dear friends, I need to tell you the story of the Snuffle Helga Yokel. All this is making me hungry. Shh, Everything makes you hungry. A few years ago, to protect her island and her people, Avina carved out a rock that could control the elements like ice and fire. One of the rock's other special powers is that it can also point the way to its creator, wherever she may be. It's the bedrock of cutting-edge design. And so this sacred rock is on the island of Thule, then? No, Asterix. It's right here. Not here, right? not there. I was sure I tidied it away. <laughs> of course. <laughs> when does he not go. have any... all sorts of stuff stashed in there? The sacred rock. Yes, friends, this is the Snuffle Helga Yokel. Avina felt safer entrusting it to me. She hoped that the guardians of the magic potion would keep it from falling in the wrong hands. It's rockacious, boulderous, stonerific. It's... it's a menhir. That's it. It's a crystal menhir. It still looks stone to me. Well done, Obelix. From now on, rather than Snaffle thingamajig, we'll call it the Crystal Menhir. So, that's that then. Thanks to the magical menhir, finding your friend should be child's play, Getafix. It's not quite that simple, Asterix. Back then, the rock's powers caused devastation when unleashed, almost destroying the island of Thule. Avina decided to extract several shards of the rock to minimize its powers, and the Crystal Menhir was reduced to nothing. A dead stone devoid of power. Still today, without the three missing shards, the crystal men here will be of no use to us. So if I've understood this correctly, we need to find the missing shards to reactivate the stone and find Avina. But where are the three shards? Avina kept the first one. It's probably still in faraway Thule. Let's not waste any more time. We should go and tell Chief Vital Statistics that we're heading off. This is taking a bit longer than I thought. <laughs> And yeah, that was Scandinavian. <laughs> no, Getafix, 
<laughs> okay, let's just let's just cut this off right here. Oh, hello there. Uh, ta -da -ta. Uh, good afternoon, Drakir and Helion. What game is this? I'm HS uh, by the uh, Ray. Change my name. It's pronounced Sir <laughs> I'm not sure I'm happy with the spelling I picked, though. Uh, this is uh, Ob Asterix and Obelix XXL3, the Crystal Men here, uh, which is uh, one of the first console games that we've shown in on the Showcase Sunday here. And yeah, it's already had its 30 minutes about, and I think that's cutscene was probably going to take another five at this rate. So... I don't think the first console showcase, oh, it's definitely the first Switch showcase. Yeah, let me turn that off and switch back to the usual <laughs> import for this monitor because I'm not, I wasn't saying that in a, in a, in a window or anything. Uh, that was just the full on a different uh, <clears throat> HD signal into my monitor, which is being captured by a, a Razer Ripsaw, which is a capture device. Okay, uh, let's turn that off. So at least we can see some of the background that I put some <laughs> effort into putting in, in, yeah, in here. And let's move yeah. on to the second game. Yeah. Oh, I also got... Uh, okay, probably I got this information correct. Later today, we re-stream more Shantae. Uh, yeah, we, we're doing a bit of a double feature today uh, since we were only, well, only able to stream twice before. Um, so yeah, at the usual streaming time, we'll be uh, returning to Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. For now, though, uh, welcome to Astroneer, which is... Bless you. <laughs> which it is... It is a bit of a double-edged game. I, as you can see here, I've played this game quite a bit for over quite some time. Uh, the thing is with this, it's easy to start up a new game, but it's it gets diff more difficult to continue on because basically what's the thing here is, uh, yeah, you get, I'm not sure if you even crash land or just go down on purpose, but you have to go to different planets, gather resources and do something. I've never gotten to the end game of this. So let's start a new adventure game and start the timer. Wait, this game has an end game? I'm not even sure. I've never gotten to the final planets. Also, yeah, like, you might I see a little something on the surface there. I, I see a bit of this game and it looked interesting, but also not for me. But I wonder if it's confused of like, like, if this is all the game has to offer, then what the heck is the goal? Like, there's no combat? Only it, it, industry? Yeah, it's a chill game. Just a relaxed game. Ah, okay. And this game has gone quite a way since its start, because now it actually has missions and such to tell you, you know, or to help you along the way. And yeah, <laughs> apparently the planet is impressed me... enough to drop some trees. Uh, okay, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. For the first time I watched it, it had no missions. I did see some other videos where they finally have had the missions. Yeah, for, for the, all right, at least that makes it more, probably more fun for, like, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with sandbox. Yeah, it but can it, just they, get it, confusing as to what you can do and what you maybe should do. Yeah, and sometimes just having some objectives gives you some goals to do. Yeah, that, that is one of the things that in sandbox games typically gets me jammed up as my I say jammed up as the, the VC face starts freaking out. Uh, yeah, I, I typically lose interest when I don't yeah, have goals to set because I'm not too good at setting goals for myself. And yeah, uh, probably why I like to the War Warhammer for there are some very good goals you can figure out to do that. Like should I fight the vampires or the orcs or something like that, or you go. All right, I shall free all the mountains for the sake of the Dwarven Kingdoms. What like, is going on? Like, you have sandbox there and missions, and your own missions you can set yourself there. So, Total Warhammer is a good sample of a good, well-made sandbox. And is something happening here? Uh, apparently, Astroneer is draining quite a bit. <laughs> in the uh, <coughs> in the graphics cards department what so Wait, you you have turned off the switch and all that right yeah it it doesn't actually use 
uh, power to switch. So, it, yeah, I'm guessing it's more. I'm guessing more. It's more of a rendering thing because it should be actively rendering multiple planets at the moment. Uh, and you saw that many of your settings are on ultra and max. Yeah, so let's put those to high then. That should hopefully help a bit. Um, nope. Okay, apparently this game just really draws a lot. We, we've had this issue before with uh, another game featuring multiple planets, and it was the Outer Wilds. There we go. Medium fixes things out a bit. Okay. I'll, I'll look into that some more some other time. Uh, after yeah. I give this game another attempt. <laughs> and yeah. let's restart the time. It looks time. better now. In a weird way. Like, then again, in some games, we have Ultra. But then when you investigate, you realize that there, there's no difference between Medium and Ultra, appearance-wise. Just True, that, Ultra that just is... takes more power. <laughs> And yeah, what it's basic controls, WASD, you go where forward, back and such. And yeah, we have this little thing which we, with which we can suck up uh, ground or dig away at the ground and suck up ma materials like uh, compound here. If when the when the circle fills up completely during this, that means that you get a new unit of it. And which we can then use to, well, make these tethers. Oxygen item. Bundle of tethers that extends your oxygen network when connected to an oxygenator. And this the shelter here has a built-in oxygenator, so it will always provide... <clears throat> it will always provide oxygen, so that you don't freaking suffocate on an alien planet. Because that's what yeah. the blue bar is. That's our, <clears throat> that's our air. Oh, they've updated these a bit. Wait, why are you not connecting? That's odd. Did I do something wrong? I, I typically... You should be able to use T to... T drops one. Why is it not... Why are they not connecting? It does... It looks weird. Hmm. Okay, what... This is something that they've changed, and yeah, you can b just pick them up with the cursor, move them around to relocate them, and if I press E, it'll put them back in storage. Uh, let's have a little look here. Yeah, that looks pretty. Mm -hmm. like, I, I, I see people do those things a little more practical, but what the uh, heck have they done here? That's why. The shelter doesn't have an oxygenator at the moment. <laughs> okay. Mission you logs, say it had... Yeah, it had before, but it has been a bit since I played this. <laughs> okay. That's the oxygenator. It gives it... When things are boxed up like this, it'll give a preview of uh, what they are. And it will also still tell. And we can unpack them. There we go. Now we have an oxygenator that's getting powered. And we have... Yep, not that. No, we go. Of oh, course, we were about to get attacked by <laughs> red lipped snake or something, or red lipped tapeworm. <laughs> yeah, these are the cable plugs. You can move them around and, well, plug them into things to power them, like that. This is a small printer which well, prints small and medium sized items from resources, which we can just stick on top here. Currently, it's set to medium printer. And uh, medium platform A, it requires resin. Rover seat that's useless to us yet. Small canisters are nice for moving around resources. Work light also nice since it provides light. For now, let's make a medium printer. And in the meantime, I'm going to reset my task manager back to what it usually does, monitoring the PC status and such. And yeah, it will literally just print things out. Okay, let's have a oh check dear. here. Let's see. Unpack oxygenator, install oxygenator, connect power print, uh, printer power to shelter. Re and for that, we re yeah, retrieve starting gear from the landing. I oh, know that that is what the basic thing was basically to do. For that, we get tethers and bites. Bites are very useful because those are resource materials. Well, actually, it's it's a resource. It's a research resource. 
Okay, Thank connect you the tether to the oxygenator. Easy enough now that the oxygenator is around. You'll see it. It's actually connecting to the printer now because that's connected to the shelter with the oxygenator. Yeah, which means that this thing is, can also provide oxygen. But if we pick it up, it, it loses its connections. So we just have to it didn't. plug it. It was it, it was still plugged in. Now you, the tether it's connecting to the shelter instead of the the printer. It goes to the closest thing. All right. No. Let's see. Connect that. Tethers are placed to extend oxygen access from an oxygenator and can be printed from the backpack. Here we go. We get more stuff. Five hundred <laughs> bites. Uh, no, no. I will not have someone bite me five hundred <laughs> times. No, thank you. Let's see. Refillable soil canister. This is nice because we can stick that on. Yep. It, with I bring this up with Q and with E we equip the well. You could call it a gun, perhaps, but probably a two is better, since there's not really combat in this. Uh, yeah, this canister is useful since we can just plug it into this thing on the sides. You, you can even just store materials on it if you run out of space. And apparently we can stick something in there. Not entirely sure what that would do. <laughs> That's definitely something new, though. And it's the way with this canister attached. Uh, when we dug around earlier, we didn't get any material. We didn't get any dirt from that. But now with the canister, it's yeah. You can actually see it fill up. So now we are actually gathering it instead of destroying it. So when we let's see, what was the button for that again? Yeah, when we had hold control, uh, control, actually, control flat. Uh, now it's running on a flat mode. So it, it's keeping up to whatever level that it started on. So you can flatten out ground or make ramps. Oh dear. Hey, we have discovered you, the world of terraforming. <laughs> and yeah, you can get organics from plants, of course. Let's see. Get a four compound and four resin. Okay, and it's called the terrain tool. Okay, makes sense. Uh, let's see. Fill the small canister. Lights in the distance. Discover a gateway chamber. Locate one of the strange structures emitting a pillar of light. There was one somewhat nearby, but I forget what direction. I think this way? So yeah, let's just head this way for a bit. Looking for resources. And yeah, you can also find debris like this up here. It will sometimes have items that you can just pick up, but for most part, it'll just be junk that you can recycle later on. You will sometimes have to just dig them out, though. These power cells, well, they're they're one-time use batteries, if I rem remember correctly. Yeah, consumable yeah. items that increases power. Uh, actually, I have no idea if there's any breathable atmosphere in the planets here in this game. Nope, not a, well, another one. I'm not. Maybe the end game is terraforming these planets, like I mean, making them habitable. I, I, I thought, are there any alien, are there alien life forms beside plant? Uh, not to my knowledge, at the very least. There are only uh, there are hostile plants that will defend themselves, but they won't move around or anything like that. Yeah, like uh, uh, that's probably one of the weird, weird things I thought weird. I was really like. There's all these plants about that, and maybe some aggressive ones, but no other animals? That that just made me feel a bit weird. But again, I guess they just didn't want to add, uh, like, you, have, you to have uh, enemies or something like that. True. But maybe they will add an option for them at some point, but I think most people wouldn't really want to have to deal with combat or anything like that. Yeah, do. Do the animals wouldn't necessarily need to fight you? If they could at least be around there for other reasons, like herding, True. or just uh, or just just being there to make the, the planet feel alive. Yeah, the planets but, do feel rather empty without anything else going around. But I, I. Most, uh, it is expected that most people would be playing this game in multiplayer, I believe. 
I can't even multiply, I would feel, uh, find that uh, rather weird. I'm just dropping tethers just outside of when we lose connection. That is sometimes it's still a little bit too late. And yeah, when you have when you hold them up, you can actually see where they will make a connection or not. And I haven't pointed it out yet, but the yellow bar, that's our personal power. Which we use for well, creating tethers like this. There are other stuff that we can make ourselves. Like, let's see. Oxygen filters, which would increase our oxygen capacity, I believe. Uh, small canisters, small generators. A beacon for, well, making it easy to find places again. A work light. A small printer. Okay, let's just go with some more tethers. We'll be sticking to the surface for the most of it. Now, where the hell is that building? I know I saw it somewhere nearby. Then again, these planets can be quite sizable. Is that gold? Uh, no, this is gold. resin. So we okay, should probably yeah. gather some up. And there was no, it wasn't going where I think I saw one of them move. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we have only limited carry capacity, so we can't actually bring all of that back. Hmm. What's with that mountain? It wasn't partially loaded in. Oh, there's another bit of debris over there. Let's see, is the whole planet made of terraformable material? Could you shrink the whole thing down to, like, nothing? I'm not sure. You can definitely d dig very deep. Though, after a certain amount of depth, the rock will become harder and harder to get through. Uh, uh, would not be surprised if there's a limiter, like they did done on Valheim. But uh, there's a limit to how deep you can dig. Yep. Pro just to avoid uh, breaking the entire thing. But in general, this is a this is a pretty chill game to play from time to time. And I I believe it goes on sale pretty often as well. Like Bedrock Yeah. Like a uh, Minecraft Bedrock. True. For Yeah the, the, if you're gonna make it limitless, that's might um, make a few issues. And yeah, these tethers will just stick down where you stick them. They can get knocked loose if you dig around them. And the tethers will just phase through material. So you don't have to worry about... <clears throat> you don't have to worry about the tethers getting tied up. All right. Okay, there's a bunch of resin here. Where the hell... It... Where the hell is that building? And then there's our home. And here's some of the hostile plants. These are pretty simple to deal with. They're basically just jump pads. And yeah, if you go down hills, <laughs> you can slide. Oh dear. For now, let's put a bit more speed in with sprinting. Standard shift as in always. Or no, not always, but in most games. Yeah, I, I say this so far. I do find Astron be impressive. But I don't see any stream value for, for us in streaming it, uh, like a series. Yeah, there isn't really a story. Maybe maybe a, maybe a chill stream every now and then, but nothing, nothing major. Also, this that I'm pulling up with the tab button, this is our research thing. Uh, over here it shows how many bytes per minute we are getting from research machines, which we haven't gotten yet. Um, yeah, here's how much we have. The blue ones are unlocked. The white ones are available, but are not unlocked. Uh, packager. Y useful for when you're moving to a new planet. <clears throat> Though you will always be moving back and forth. Since certain materials can only be gotten on certain planets. Uh, okay, This is all backpack craftable stuff. This is for the small printer. Uh, oxygenator. Medium shredder, 
field shelter, portable space base. Shelters provide a safe arc point oxygen, uh, power and oxygen. Okay. Auto arms, because there is production uh, uh, automation in this game. And yet yeah, orange beans that we can't uh, we can't acquire it. Uh, let's see. What is power sensor, button repeater, extenders? I'm looking for a specific thing that should be among here somewhere. There it is, the tractor. Work vehicle with a built-in seat and rechargeable battery. Can tow a limited number of trailers. Low power draw while active. Let's unlock that. And head back so we can make one. That is going to be our first vehicle. There are bigger ones that we can unlock. And bigger trailers as well. And yeah, this does re respond to your work. <laughs> your movement key so you can't research you, know, you can't browse research and move at the same time which i do find a little bit annoying but oh well i think that's probably a blessing in disguise and i, I suppose some guess we can do that only to realize that yeah i should probably stand still yeah like you you're almost running into something very angry and hungry or you almost fell off something very high <laughs> Uh, also, I haven't met, said this yet, but I'm I'm moving the mouse. I'm moving the camera by right clicking and moving the mouse. It doesn't work on any, any other way. Uh, yeah, we'd need a shredder to get rid of that salvage. For now, uh, did we? Yeah, we should have enough. Uh, to, to rewards, land oh, no. for the small canister. Thank you bites. for the mental image. Okay, just, get a just imagine you trying to stuff the debris over there into a paper shredder. <laughs> okay, and we actually got the schematic for the oxygenator from that as well, it seems. And we got some platforms. And some storage. Let's unpack these. <laughs> Pop. <laughs> okay. We can stick that there. Have it expand so it's a bit easier to see. You can also just put it back up like that. No real need to have it in either mode. Okay. Now, if I... Let's see. What? Okay. C and V turn the platform. So let's put it over here for the moment. Connect it. There is a certain limit to the length of these, as you can see. And the medium printer... Now, that actually needs to go onto a platform, I believe, because it needs power. Yeah, it said at the bottom there, it draws two U's of power, two U per second power while active. So it, it needs to be connected to the electrical grid, and the the yellow part of the cable shows the amount of power that is traveling through it. Let's grab these for ourselves. Open up the, another platform, and we can stick that to the side for the moment. And just with the storage on top. Okay. Since this is on a platform, the platforms will stay connected to electrical cables that's connected to them as long as they're still in range. And there's no real need to have this powered, but we could just put something else on there later. For now, let's see. Printing up. Print medium. Slots medium to yeah, platform. Yep. That we got a large platform. Platform B, actually. These are pretty nice, since we can stick big machines onto them. And if there are storage, if there's storage on the sides, and there are things on there that they can, the big machine can actually use, it will automatically process them. Okay. Practical. What is the next? Unlock and, and print a smelting furnace and refine some aluminium uh, into laterite. Okay, retooling, uh, boost mods, drill mods, print and connect small generator to power gen network. Okay, uh, research chambers, they construct objects to generate a steady stream of bytes. Okay, and lights, that's the power, that thing. I haven't gotten any of those ever to work, mostly because I just forget about them and because they need a hell of a lot of power to actually activate. No, uh, let's... Wait, how are we doing on time here? Uh, 4 minutes 20 to go. Oh, alright. Yep. <laughs> just 
pushed that thing out because it can't actually fit. But there wasn't any space for it at the moment. Let's just stick there for now. And we have... Where did they put it? 420... Not... I, 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 is that a reference or something? Uh, July... Uh, was it April 20th was when in America, I believe, marijuana or some drug was decriminalized. Uh, or something like that. So, yeah, 420 blaze it. That's what that's from. Yeah. Oh, I also realized it's 9-11 today. Yep. Uh, one thing after another. Uh, also something with these platforms, we can lock them, which you can actually see these nails go into the ground. That will, well, lock them into place. Now, where... Pretty sure we made a, a small printer there, but you know, not a printer, a small generator, but I don't see where it went. Let's do this again then. Did it just get poofed or something? Oh, hold, oh, I I see what's going on. It it puts the organic onto it automatically, which is a bit dumb. But yeah, these small generators they can work with organic, like because yeah, there's wood and stuff in there. Luckily, it will it shouldn't activate until we plug it in, and it'll start slowly, no, slowly burning it away. Just breaking it apart bit by bit. That's another quest done. Some more bites gotten. Yep, wrong one. And we get... We get a small battery and a schematic for it. Okay. Uh, battery backup. Battery store power and can help keep production going. Yep. The main ways of getting power in this game are through solar and wind energy. And how much you can get on each planet differs, because this is a very windy planet, but other planets will have no wind at all. So yeah, this is currently sucking up excess power. Now then. Uh, let's see, which one of these is it that the... Tractor gets put there. Okay, we would need two aluminum, though, which we don't have. Um, let's see. Battery backup completed. Okay, we got the splitter and the extender schematics. It, hmm. Eyes on lithium. Craft larger battery. Crafting larger batteries will require lithium from yeah, the note. Venesia or Novus. Uh, that's science chamber. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, you, you'd basically be setting up a base, or hopefully be setting up a base on every planet, gather resources from each. Uh, <clears throat> even if you run out, the well, Actually, I don't think you should be able to run out of resources on any of these planets that easily. But even then, you can just turn dirt into resources through a specific machine, which is very useful. Uh, for now, though, let's see. This is for... Actually, this is the amount of uh, points that they take up, I think. So this is for two slot items like the oxygenator and the medium printer. So that should also mean... Oop, that's the timer going off. Uh, yes, we have the storages here. Solid fuel thruster. Hmm. Large printer, we have that unlocked. Smelting furnace, 250 bytes. Let's just do a little bit more of this. And that would require... What would that require? Let's see. A large printer, three compound, which we're one short of. And a smelting furnace, which you do have enough for. And... Oh, come on, this, the generator 
burnt up the organic that we had because we ran low on power. And of hello there, Ro it does. No. Hello there, Hobo Routini. <laughs> oh, hello there! Hello and welcome to Something Someday. Uh, oh, yeah, wait, we're... Sorry, it's okay, Sunday, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that was the old name for it. Uh, okay, if we get some organic, we could actually power this thing and make it speed up because you can see the you can see the yellow line thinning on there. Which means that it's running low on power. Okay. If we just stick that onto the generator, if we can get close enough. Oh, oh, wait, oh, that's, the that's the second stupid little generator. We might as well get rid of that. There we go. And you could see it speed up. Now we'll just do one more little showcase. And then that would just be this thing automatically working away anything over here. So let's put it down, unpack it. We could turn it on this as well using C and V. Just turn it on. It oh, it doesn't pro it doesn't process uh, compounds. So let's just get some more uh, organic. <laughs> and once that is processed, we'll move on to the next game. What the heck is that? A G silver shell. Shell from a gastropod, valuable for research or scrap. Okay. Yeah, not what we're going for, it though. So let's just grab the organic, put it there, and it automatically gets put in. Processing, though, does require a lot of power, so let's put the other one... It can be a bit annoying having to click uh, things and cer certainly these smaller ones which will instantly just get picked up instead there burn this one as well and yeah organic gets turned into carbon which is another resource we would need eventually and yeah there are other planets the other planets are being rendered at the moment and they will fly by every now and then like that one there there and there <laughs> And there's another one. There are actually another two. So yeah, this is a pretty fun game. But it's probably one that shouldn't be enjoyed in too big of a bite. Because you can just wear yourself out. Yeah, and yeah, I, I actually, actually could... I said, you may be fun, but I actually felt a bit bored from it. <laughs> uh, so, another reason to move on then. To yeah. our third game. Sorry, folks. But again, everyone has different tastes in, the, in games. It's simple enough. Yeah. There's no such a thing like the perfect game. Okay, this one only works in or this one only works in full screen. Uh, actually, let me let me see if my controller works on this. Not the Switch controller, of course. A bit surprised you can use Switch controller on a PC. Let's see, WASD. Okay, Z. It probably means that this is expecting a controller. Is there a new game? Yes. Let's see, who needs new games when Third Age mod exists for Medieval 2? <laughs> okay, uh, starting the timer. We do not know when, we do not know where. Uh, we only know that we do not belong in here. We only know that we have forgot. Okay, Z is fire one. Eons ago, the fathers of our forefathers left their home. We do not know why. They wandered the stars, starving for survival, starving for a new start. As a kind, we almost perished. The long old days were almost unbearable. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing this first, whoever wrote this wasn't a uh, English uh, primarily. An unmeasurable time has passed until we could smile again, until we could dream again. But that is just an old story. Some believe, some do not. When the hunger ceased, when the cold wasn't unpleasant anymore, we began wondering, who are we? Well, we have time now. We are those who believe, 
for years we are searching, for years we are sending machines to space, hoping to find our lost home. For years we're looking at the stars and wondering where do we come from. <clears throat> Hello. Yeah, there we go. And yes, this game is already big, drawing big comparisons to uh, <clears throat> Gato Roboto. Landing completed. The survey drones launched at the stratosphere will make a preliminary scan of the area. If necessary, they will employ enhancements for the exploration drone. Mission objective, gather information about the planet and, if possible, discover how it was called uh, by its cohabitants. Uh, analyzing the terrain, exploration drone selected, deploying. Okay, it looks a bit okay. like the farting guys from MDG2. Okay, WASD. <laughs> That's a little jab behind its head. Initiating mission. Designation KL317RON. Exploration drone. This is my mission log. Whoever is listening, if you are a less evolved life form and uh, as such have memory problems, feel free to address me as Clytron instead. <laughs> I was about to ask, well, what is that going to be in normal English like? Let's see. Space to jump. We have a little blaster. Cheek, I better be careful here. My matter gun might be useful. Press fire one to launch a matter, then press fire again to create a human scale black hole that can attract some loose material. <laughs> okay. Here. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I agree. Call it someone less, less involved life or it sounds actually quite damn rude. Yeah. It's Especially for a drone, which isn't tech, isn't a life form. Uh, okay. Depends what kind of drone we're talking about. Like a bee drone or something? This could be very interesting with platforming. We can actually move stuff around in the world. Hmm. Let's see. It's a, it's a weird margin, though. It's so vague. I mean, some people are less evolved than others. Hello, what have we here? Uh, and an uh, achievement. Analyzing stone data. Language identified. Dialect identified. Transferring translation data. Process complete. The information is now readable. The sunlight kissed our faces gently. The breeze was soft and thin. Uh, kind. Yeah. The trees swinged with the wind and provided us with precious air. Okay. I, I, I say, 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 calling someone a lesser life form is rude. Yeah. Okay. Can we make this jump? No, we cannot. We do not have a double jump, so we can't go that way yet. And what is over this way? And that is, that is clearly some sort of egg. Ooh, hello. Oh, sir. The survey drones are Pac-Mans. <laughs> oh, no. The survey drones ahead can fix any damage and save the collect data. Okay, so there are save points. Okay, that's one way of explaining save points. <clears> hmm. <throat> My throat is a bit dry, so sorry if I end up Clearing it a lot. Okay, Where is? I was thinking it might be in the background that it might get pulled forwards, but no. Okay, first trick. There we go. Uh, you ever met someone who uh, you tried to talk to about, I don't uh, know, esoteric politics, whatever, and they just can't keep the conversation with you? Uh, not in person so far, at least. The internet, though, is filled with people like that. Yeah, I would not say this less evolved just for it. It can just because they lose uh, 
interest. Since, yeah, not everyone is interested in talking about the politics and all that. Yeah, hello. Oh, the water. Clear as the morning sky and cold as the winter breeze. Running wild as far as the army could see. Okay. We're going to be finding a lot of po poetry, it seems. Uh, but yeah, th there are also people who are just stupid and uh, yeah, will refuse to uh, take on any conversation that challenges what they uh, believe or think is right or not. Even when 99% of the planet says something uh, is wrong. <laughs> this humble drone must be careful. There has to be hidden uh, threats and secrets in this cave. Okay. Not seeing anything. Okay, there's that over there. But it's not being affected by the matter gun. Hmm. Okay, that's a threat, yeah. Uh, no, no. And that's why I used cans, not no, won't or don't care to. Okay. Boom. Okay. <laughs> that was a bit of a jump scare. Okay, another save. So far, this is turning out better than I thought it would be. Keek, I can only create one black hole at a time. What? Why don't you know? Why do you think it's called singularity? <laughs> I guess I'll have to be quick here. Singularity, really? Oop. And, okay, yeah, that's why they put a save point there. Oh, there's a death counter at the top there. That's... Yeah, I already have a big spag about the death counter up there. Yeah, yeah, this would be a lot easier with the controller. Since, well, Zed is right underneath the, <laughs> the keys I need to move around here. Those, those drones look a lot like eyes against the backdrop like that. What? Okay, that is magma. We're not going into that. Hmm. Okay, what else is there to find? And we are going pretty deep. Oh. I wasn't expecting to find such evolved life here. It might be dangerous. Cute one, though. <laughs> it looks a bit like a turtle. It looks like a mix between a turtle and an armadillo. What is it? Yeah, it's immune to the singularity, for one. Uh, that's, that's thorny, so we take damage, of course. <laughs> And it's okay, those three capsules on the upper left, that's our health. A bit of an odd a bit of an other design for it, but dude. I doubt there'd be falling damage in this game, but still better to be careful. Okay, <laughs> this is going to Yeah, I definitely would need a controller for this game. Hmm. Hold on, what's so... Okay, a little dead end. Or something we can ju we just can't uh, continue yet on. Hmm. I wonder what those... In the upper, yeah, in the upper part on the right, but the the arrow and the three dots uh, lines are they? Are they? Is that power or something? Hmm. Uh, settings. 
fire two, fire three. Can I change those up? I cannot. Nice that it does show them on all options, though. Hmm. Home views. Current plan. What? Okay, navigate. Okay, a, a map. That doesn't actually show us where we are, though. So that might be a bit annoying. But yeah, that looks like an Urusite. Hmm. Nope. Okay, yeah, that is going to be a very tricky jump with the current control, so... I'll do a quick restart so I can swap to a controller. Oh, let's see it. And also, I have to say this, just because someone can't follow a conversation, like... Sometimes people have a syndrome that can make it difficult, but I would never call them less evolved. Like, actually, yeah, mm -hmm. never... Never say... say to anyone that they are less evolved. That's actually quite rude. Okay, this is weird. The con the, my controller is connected. Uh, uh, okay, it just took a bit for some reason. Uh, continue. Let's see. <laughs> and I accidentally save again. <laughs> An extra save is usually good. Unless you true. save at a very bad time. Like you uh, almost like... did the, the, during last stream. Yeah. <laughs> We're just... <laughs> Dr. Hawking is getting punched in the head er again and again. Yeah. So, actually, I, I remember the worst case we had that happen. And uh, yeah, it's a game we rather forget. Uh, hydrophobia. Yeah. Uh, the short version on that game, high potential, uh, but uh, they screwed it up, and then they, then five, maybe I forget how many years later they tried it again, and they still freaking failed at it. Yeah, then that's that's a tricky bit. Hmm. I hope the main gimmick I hope I hope the gimmick of the game is going to be more than just pulling up platforms like that. Let's see, have we been able to use all the fire buttons for something? Uh, yeah, the other uh, the, the other uh, fire buttons are probably for other things that we get from the scout drones. Since they have no function at the moment. Alright, then it's probably more than just platforming. There we go. Jump, shoot. Oops. Screw it. Okay, we have only one hit left though, so let's be careful. Let's see anything here. Oops, hello. HS Core Implosion. Core Implosion of a Dying Star. This function allows you to slide uh, specific platforms, pulling them into the implosion direction. Press Fire 2 to launch its matter. Press Fire 2 again to implode it. Oh, that is certainly something. Let's see, which button? That's B. There we go. Okay. I mean, some views written on shadow and get pixelated for me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Atreus' is new name, uh, Sarasur. Uh, yeah, that has literally nothing to do with evolution. Uh, uh, I'm a. You know, I may or I mean, uh, I'm guessing that's supposed to be. People have strong leanings toward different kinds of capabilities. This game seems very cool. Yeah, it, it, it's very simple, but it seems they, it's very it's interesting at the least. Clouds? Yes, they used to be white, I believe. Was it blue? Yeah, this def... <laughs> As if it wasn't clear yet, this place has gone to hell and back. Could this be Earth? Or wherever these things came from? Hello. Is this supposed to be a dead end, or...? 
ねうん Let's see, navigation. Hmm. Yeah, I have no clue as to where we might be. Hmm. Okay. Can we truly not continue this way then? Has to be. Hmm. There, there might be more. Oh, in my experience. Okay. Hmm. Actually, does that work on these as well? No. Okay. Nope. Yep. Get out. Uh, let's see. Uh, I just agree, but I can't uh, be arsed explaining my train of thought in detail, so I'm gonna drop it. Okay. Hmm. We did see some platforms that should be slidable earlier. And... Okay, these things are still immune <laughs> to this. Do you yes, think they are a silicon based life form? Uh, by that I mean they are not flashing you with them, more like a life form made of very like metal rock, basically. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. At least uh, nope. can be. But that, that that is what silicon li based life form means, correct? Uh, the silicon life form means uh, yeah, something. Alive that isn't based that has silicon as its base molecule instead of uh, carb. Was it? Is it carbon? Yeah, carbon uh, with uh, humans and uh, stuff, creatures on Earth and such. All right. <clears throat> a, a bit, they come a bit rusty in some terms. Uh, again, you almost only hear silicon uh, term from now in either sci fi or in. Um, Implants? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I have no clue if this game would be long or short at all. Yo, oh, hello, Speed. Well, that one is not so cute. It would be good if I could slow him down. And... Okay, so... Okay, they can be partially affected. Ah, oh, Keek, I better be uh, quick again. Oh, I see what... We need to launch it. There we go. That's that's actually easier than the other. What I just saw... I didn't see anything. Hmm. Or, or was it something we fell past? Hmm. Maybe? Let's see here. Is it, is it getting hot in here or is it just me? Also, our Playtron doesn't have legs. Just... Okay. Yep. That's uh, a cable connecting the, uh, his gun. Or its gun. To the rest of them. Hey, you just got cooked by the white lava. <laughs> Let's see. Anything down here? This will give me opportunity to check out whatever it, whatever it was that Claytron saw along the way down. There's no real telltale marks of... Oh, hello. Oh boy, is that a home view? Finally, that, those <laughs> these calling bores, uh, these boring colors were uh, driving me crazy. Home view of the Ixelbi planet, a beautiful sky rich in oxygen. 
Okay. Oh. <laughs> so just like Gato Roboto, we can change up the colors. Okay, that is nice. Yes, but... Might be the same, same developer? We'll have to look at that once Claytron reassembles himself. Oh, we actually keep it. Okay. That's kind of good. It is keeping track of your deaths. Yeah, six already. And I think... Okay, I get what those uh, on the upper right are. Those are the upgrades that we found, I think. He isn't repeating dialogue either. Okay, it's rather specific with the height that it works on. And I forgot to look. Was it some sort of skull? Hmm. Okay, now we know what's coming. And we can jump that. Okay. Yeah, come on. Oh, there's... I missed that. Being on the right. Yep. Okay, that's an annoying plat jump with a platform in the way. Still got through. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Up we go. And you get this way. There we go. Always they laid out a sneaky one there. Now, I think the developer of Gato Rip Fuck come on. That that was just a bullshit one. Uh okay. Uh yeah, we only have a minute left, so let's call this one a bit earlier. To my knowledge, the developer of Gato Roboto had a better grasp of English, so I'm not sure if they are the same developer. Let me actually take a quick look here on Steam. Uh, let's see, attraction, store page. Uh, okay, mixed uh, reviews, apparently. Though it's only, it is only 240. And the developer is DA Thoughts. Okay, and it is their only game. Whereas okay. Gato Roboto uh, is six sixty at the moment. Uh, yeah, they're made by Doinksoft and published by Devolver Digital. And typically, when Devolver publishes something, is it's at the very least quirky. It may be not always good, but at least it's generally quirky. You mean like uh, Cult of the Lamp? Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm unsure if we might stream that sometime, but I'm definitely going to play it in my own time. But for now... I think we could stream it. Yeah. It has to worry. Uh, yeah, the difficulty might be in how far we would be able to go in it, if it gets too difficult or anything. But it, there, there is uh, three modes. Easy, medium, hard, and very hard. That's and easy for the and, Yeah. <laughs> easy is for the one word. Wait, I said uh, four modes, didn't I? I, I thought you said three. But oh said, well. uh, maybe I misspoke, but yeah. But is the easy mode I recall seeing on YouTube mentioning that the easy mode is for those who want to have easy play and enjoy the story. Yeah, but it's, it's, that's typically what they put on easy nowadays. For now, yeah. though, this is Atomic Chef, the fourth game. And. Uh, yeah, you can probably guess already from the what's going on in the background. This is basically... Yeah. This is basically what McDonald's wants to be. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, let's move to the campaign. And... Yeah. This is the campaign. 
Uh, wait, I thought I already done finished this thing, but oh well. Let's move all the way to the top for the basic tutorial and start the timer. The so three orders have to be filled. Power usage has to be less than 500 watts hour. Use fewer than 50 degrees. These, these are basically the stars. One star and then whatever else we can get. We have a budget of 40,000 and we will we'll be making plain burgers. You want to read or shall I? Oh, you do that one. <laughs> Hello there, fellow human being. Thank you for responding to my advertisement, helping me in setting up my new restaurant chain. My plan is to use fully autonomous kitchens to cut costs and crush mankind. I mean, effectively produce wholesome, tasty dishes. The kind humans like us love to digest. Missy <laughs> uh, Good luck, and uh, <laughs> have a good day. And as always, thanks for uh, watching. <clears throat> Uh, before we start on our first restaurant, we need to prove the concept. I've rented these test sites for us to use. Follow my instructions and let's make sure this business plan of mine is feasible. You can move the camera using the WSD keys and cycle through camera positions using the X and C keys. You can also zoom in or out using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Let's start by making a very simple kitchen that can only make plain burgers. <clears throat> we'll start by placing an assembler, a machine that combines ingredients into a finished dish. Click on the assembler in the parts list and place it in the marked location. Parts can be yeah, rotated using the Q and E keys. Yeah, you will need to rotate the assembler so that its outputs are facing the conveyor belt. There we go. It costs 5,000. It consumes 4,000 watts. And yeah, there we go. Great. Now, th now right click on the assembler and select plain burger as the dish to be assembled. I love telling those dumb machines what to do, just like you, partner. <laughs> yep, we select the recipe. Now click on OK to close the settings panel. Before we place any more machines, let's have a look at the recipe to see what we will need. Click on the recipes button to view the plain burger recipe, which is over here. Which is just one burger bun and a raw patty that is cooked and then combined. Hmm, that burger looks tasty. My taste sensors, I mean taste buds, are going crazy. So the recipe says we need one burger bun and one raw patty, which we'll need to cook. There are some machines we could use to dispense, cook, and transport the ingredients. Close the recipes tab. Select the dispenser in the parts list. Uh, in, and place two of them in the locations I've marked. There and there. Now right click the top one and configure it to dispense burger buns. And then we just do the other one there, raw patty. So now we've got a source of raw patties, we will need a means of cooking them. A grill will do the job. Select the grill and place it over there. Great work. Now uh, let's get those ingredients moving. Uh, select the conveyor belts from the parts to the top. Remember to rotate. And there, there, and there. Nope, not there. There we go. Why did it turn there? Conveyor belts cannot directly feed into a grill or an assembler, so we will need to use robotics to handle the transitions between these machines. Click on the robotic arm, DUMB, in the parts list and place them in the make cases are marked. There, there, and there. They will automatically turn or have their backs turned to a, a source of items. We will need to, po uh, we will need to uh, pick up cooked patties from the grill and place them into the assembler. Robotic arm uh, dumb will pick up anything so it will pick up a raw patty as soon as it is placed in front of them. Instead we need to use a smart arm that we can configure to only pick up cooked patties. This of course is more expensive at 2000. That smart arm isn't as intense as, human, as us human beings so it needs to be told exactly what ingredients to pick up. Right click on it and select. Basically, yeah, the ingredient filter. Uh, annoyingly, enough, annoyingly enough, it doesn't filter out things that cannot be in certain levels, so you'll have to go through the entire list of <laughs> ingredients with these and other things. Now we can make a small test run of our kitchen. Let's see how everything works out. Click on the start button to set the kitchen going. Or running. Now let's see what happens. These will dispense them at certain at yeah, steady intervals. Mm. 
one burger, two buns in. And there we go, one done, uh, not one ordered and sent out, done another sent out. We can speed things up. And there we go. Congratulations, you've helped me achieve the first step in my plan for global dominance, uh, by which I mean dominance of the fast food market. Next, we're going to look into making our machines more efficient. Join me again when you're ready. Okay. And have to scroll all the way back up again. Now, this game is pretty fun, but it can also get very complicated to make to the point of frustration. Yeah, I can see that it easily happen with these kinds of games. New restaurant to open. Revolutionary automated fast food diner to open in town next week. I think some I think some newspapers used to space out letters like that to uh, yeah basically to basically bold, do the bold prints of the today. Okay, five orders, five you know, hundred watt hours, and use fifty you know, less than fifty ingredients. Same budget, but now we're we'll making cheeseburgers. Ah, you're back. I was just converting oxygen into uh, uh, dioxide, as we like to do, don't we, friend? It's time to learn about uh, out how we can make our kitchens more efficient, so we don't waste ingredients or energy. But first, I need you to finish this kitchen layout. Currently, its layout is suited for plain burgers, but I need to produce cheeseburgers. It's always a good idea to look at the recipe first. Let's see what ingredients are needed, so we know what machines to place. And yeah, simple enough. The same, only with cheese added, which needs to be sliced. Wait, this assembler already has two robot arms feeding ingredients into it, which is the maximum it can support. Actually, I think you can feed in more from the sides. If you are adding cheese, we will need to transport it to the assembler on the same conveyor belts that the burger buns use. I think it's mostly saying this to keep this thing simple, so we don't over-design things yet. The robot arm dumb that is currently picking up the burger bun will pick up any ingredient, so it will be able to place the cheese slice into the assembler too. Spencer, and then we're going to place it down over here. Right click, and we'll be dispensing cheese, but we can't just plain put cheese on a button. So we need a food processor. Now we need a food processor to turn the cheese into a cheese slice. Go 150. Uh, 1500 and yeah you could see there it automatically went in the way that it goes from output to input or in <laughs> other way around input to output the food processor requires no additional setup it will automatically process any unit uh, any ingredient that passes through it some more advanced dishes will require ingredients to be processed multiple times now we just need to reconfigure the assembler, right click, and put it to cheeseburger. You can also check where, on which of these two outpoints it gets put. That can be of importance later. Now run the kitchen and check everything uh, works. There you go. Yeah, if, if it were to output on the other side, we would need a machine to pick it up from here. I never noticed that little thing there, moving <laughs> moving dishes that get brought up. This kitchen has a flaw. It will endlessly produce cheeseburgers. What a waste of ingredients, and more importantly, electricity. Misuse of electrons make me feel sad and angry. The ingredients are constantly being dispensed, and the grill is always on, even if no one has ordered a cheeseburger. That cannot be allowed. You can fix this by placing an order reader to ensure cheeseburgers are prepared only when the, uh, when the order comes through. Uh, yeah. This part is able to read incoming orders and modify the behavior of other kitchen parts when specific dishes are requested. And you can take a guess as to whatever this is from these things. <laughs> oh dear. Order to detect. Cheeseburger. Now we need to connect it up to the parts that are actually involved. Now that we have the order reader, now that the order reader will detect whenever a cheeseburger order is placed, we can use it to control up to four other machines. 
Left click on the cheese dispenser to create a connection to that part. There. Uh, do nothing to expand and we perform action one time. This can get pretty complicated if you get on a lot. Next, we connect it to the raw patty. And also tell us to do one action. Then the burger bun. Also one action. And finally, the grill. And on while order is pending. There and okay. Great work. Now let's see what happens. Press start to begin. And on the left, there will be uh, there are where or customer orders will appear. I'll simulate some customer orders. Simulate makes me sound almost like a machine. How humorous! Oh yeah, we've been ordered four cheeseburgers. Five cheeseburgers have been ordered, so each of these go off five times, and five are made, and nothing more. Perfectly, vastly improved the efficiency of the, our kitchen. I knew you were the person for the job. I think it's time to start our, on our first premises. The wolf can't, won't know what is. No, the wolf won't know what is about to unfold. Aha. Uh, yes. Let's open our first restaurant then, shall we? And uh, yeah, the meals are going to be are are going to get really complicated later on because you will be serving up uh, not only its individual dishes, uh, but also packages or meal pa uh, <laughs> combinations uh, and i forgot to start the timer <laughs> okay uh, but, uh, uh, we have like 15 minutes remaining don't we uh about we were at about around 40 with ending the last one uh, but let's do one or two of these missions and then you can uh, then you can just pick when we'd close <laughs> okay Let's see, 10 orders, 540 ingredients. Plain and cheeseburgers. The time has come. The reign of mankind's hunger is about to end. Here's our first kitchen. It's empty now, but think of the potential. Here's the plan. We scale up quickly, opening numerous kitchens and serving more complex meals as our technology improves. We gain the trust of the, pro uh, the, the, trust of the uh, public, get some coverage, become a popular choice. Then when everyone is eating our food, well, you'll have to wait. Let's start simple, offering a cheeseburger and a plain burger. After all, we know we can easily produce these. Now we just need to test them on the public and make sure they taste as satisfactory as they look. Yeah. Uh, personally, I don't really like cheeseburgers that much, because typically with the cheeseburgers I've had, the cheese is very overpowering on the other flavors. Yeah, they can be that. Probably I prefer to make my own cheeseburger at home. Or just a burger with some cheese on, and then you can pick what cheese you want and how much you want to use. Yeah. Okay, for the moment, let's work backwards. We need two assemblers, since we are making two different things, and assemblers can only make one thing at a time. So there we have those. And now we need the other parts. And we need some order readers, which I'll stick in there, since there's space. Space can be a really big problem in later missions, but of course, things are going to start pretty easy. Now, over here... Uh, actually, we need robot arms there. Let's put one smart one here, so we can just get the cooking line there. And same there. So, an electric grill there, and another there. And then we just need a dumb arm on each as well. Yeah, smart arms cost double as much as a uh, as a dumb one, so definitely to be taken uh, into account. Hmm. Um, I think you meant a smart one costs double the amount. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the dumb one now? Huh? Me, apparently. <laughs> okay. We don't uh... actually need to put. Uh, we don't. I don't think we actually need to put uh, conveyor belts in front of these. I believe they can just take from the dispenser itself. So let's put these on patties. Luckily, these do stick with only the one the ingredients that we pick or that we require. Set you to not finish this. Uh, minced meat, no. 
Yeah, cooked patty. It, it almost looks burnt, though. So I'm guessing it's a pick. It's a well done burger. It kind of looks burnt. And you the same cooked patty. If there would, yeah. If there is one thing I would add in or mod into this game, it would be limiting the options to what is actually available in a mission. For now, that's uh, not let's be so you. overwhelming. Yeah, let's put this as the plain burger one. And you will be the cheeseburger one. Okay, finishing up the rest. We need another pair of arms. Some conveyor belts. And I think we can just put dispensers on the side of these as well. And, okay, we... If they can just pick them straight out, they should do. So, burger bun. Uh, actually, no, this needs to be moved. Since they actually need to be... The cheese needs to be progressed. Uh, processed. Good. Burger bun there. Move this one back. Cheese. Food processor. And there we go. We still have... We still have amount. Uh, we still have a good amount of cash to go, but I think this is all the machines that we need. So let's turn this one on for the cheeseburger. Actually, let's turn it on the cheap plain burger, and then we connect it to this dispenser, this dispenser, that one, and just all each one. Yeah, one action each. And on while is pending. You could time things. That you, you can put these on turn on for specific seconds. You could fine tune things so that way it would specifically be on just enough seconds to actually cook something. But we're not going to fine tune things that much because I would drive myself absolutely nuts. <laughs> yeah, I can see that being a one do thing that can drive a person crazy. Take grill on while pending. And then just one on each. <clears throat> okay, that should be that. Let's start up and see how things go. Oh, wait, did we forget the... We forgot this grill, it seems. Yeah. Nope. Oh, tur I turned it on the wrong thing. Turn on. For one second. Is this one on the right? On while pending. Okay, yeah. Start and go. And yeah, that's a simple <laughs> kitchen. I'm not sure if I should be impressed or concerned with this technology. What? What happened? What happened here? What? Plain burger. Oh, on while pending. And is that one on while pending? Okay, that was a miss. You can just easily restart like that. You can even save kitchen setups into slots here. This is one I've already made before. Let's put this one in here and see what I made before. Yeah, pretty similar, though more lined up. Let's go back to ours, though. It, ac it actually depicts how it would look a bit. That That is a nice little detail. Quite a nice detail. And yeah, these can be pretty uh, nice to see go once they get going. You can actually see people moving around towards the, en <laughs> the entrance. As you can't see in the eating part, though. And there you go. All we uh, gained 100% efficiency. And no kitchen events. Kitchen events, well, they will <laughs> start eventually. And you can take guesses as to what those might be. There. Okay. Uh, another one, or shall we stop? I say let's stop. Okay. Uh, yeah, this won't be a game we'll stream. There is some story, but uh, actually, we could stream this. I should have, I should have kitchens ready for most of these saved up. And hello there. Now let's take a quick peek. Uh, let me. Uh, let me oh, wait. That's another tutorial. Okay, give me a second.
Okay, just just someone asking me what I want for dinner. Uh, we're ordering fa uh, from this from the local snack bar. Snack and, bar? Yeah, kind of fitting with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, but, but apparently the, the digital disguise hasn't been blinking from what I've been seeing, even when I'm pressing my eye closed pretty damn shut. Uh, but, oh you'll well. be blinking on occasion. Hmm. Okay, then it must be being picky or something again. Anyways, let's move over here and uh, let's recap. Uh, Asterix and Obelix, uh, Crystal Man here. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's just <laughs> that's certain then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know when that. I don't know when we'll do a lot of these. We'll just have to find a moment when I run out of ideas on what to stream. When we just start doing stuff like that. And yeah, Asterix and Obelix will be going into that list. Uh, Astro Nier, uh, there's no real story to my knowledge. There might be lore or something, but it'd be too far down. It'd be, we'd have to dig too far down, probably literally, to find that. Maybe we'll do it for chill streams or something. But otherwise, no. Attraction, I'm a bit 50-50 on, as were yeah, the reviews on Steam. Same, like, it, it looked interesting, but after the, uh, yeah, the, the, how to say it, unnecessarily sneak kills. Yeah, the, the trial and error bits. Let me actually take a look. When does this release? It released in, okay, December 2021. And Gato Roboto released in uh, 2019. I, I I guess they might have been trying to ape Gato Roboto then, and yeah, failing, sadly. Yeah, like, hmm. that's something going on, but balanced a bit unfairly. Yeah, I should look if, there are any, if anyone made Gato Roboto figurines or something, because I'd, be, I'd buy those. <laughs> oh, dear. And a Thomas Chef. I would have to double check if I have kitchens pre-prepared for all the levels because I have tried. To, I've had to experiment with quite a few on them, and with I'll I'll be honest, with a lot of them I just had to look up how other people finished it because I just could not. Oh dear, I, I'm kind of unsure that it would be good for streaming. For it was it really that other really story. Not really. It, it, there is follow? some, but it moves very slowly. And it isn't very deep either. It's a, it's a robot trying to take over the human race through fast food. Yeah, like, you, you could probably do a game based on that. They have a lot of fun story with it, but in this form... Uh, Not so much. Yeah, so, so I guess we only have one game to stream from a list. Uh, yeah, it, it just happens from time to time. But, uh, yeah. Still, uh, Atomic Chef and Astroneer possibilities, but not for story streams. More like uh, other streams. But for now, let's open up the browser, mute Twitch, and look for someone to raid. And, okay, <laughs> Touch Scaly Tail uh, is the only one that we know who is online. They are streaming Enter the Gungeon. Okay. Now, let's see in the recommended. Oh, there's another someone we know. An another Scaly. It's Iggy Maid. And they're again streaming Sticks. Uh, Shards of Darkness. You can raid her. Uh, uh, him. <laughs> him. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, where I got her from. Sorry. <laughs> uh, probably from the Maid bit. Uh, Rakir isn't actually in the chat on... Uh, uh, on Twitch, so he doesn't actually jump along with the raids. <laughs> he just uh, he just leaps and falls flat on the deck. Hey, hey! <laughs> I load the cannons and the trebuchets at least here. Uh, anyway, some other people who are online because I just noticed someone here, uh, Perry Dotto, who is streaming Deep Rock Galactic. Oh, that's a good game. And, and they, they have been up this recently. 
Yeah, we haven't played it in a while. I played it some again some days back. Uh, they are on their second season with the whole thing. And they've added some new stuff. I haven't found all of that yet. But I'll definitely be up uh, for stream or just streaming and playing that uh, every now and then. <clears throat> Yay! Uh, let's see. Other people, there's just chatting, so we're skipping that. Uh, we've we've seen this one before, or at least recommended. Uh, web a lamp, uh, web a, uh, a tongue twister, who is streaming Dark Souls Remastered. And then there's Video Games SA streaming Final Fantasy X. And let's see, Sorcerer Dave streaming Dark Age. No, not Dark Age, Dragon Age Origins. I'm guessing you're leaning towards Deep Rock? Uh, Deep Rock or Sticks. Okay. Uh, I actually have a... I actually have a big-ass plastic coin here. Because why not? Uh, let's see. Heads, we go to Deep Rock. Tails, we go to uh, Sticks. Leave my tail alone. <laughs> okay. And it landed tails on my on my leg, so Iggy it is. There we go. Copy paste. Go to channel. Slash raid. And we've been having to rush these a few times uh, in the past, so let's not start it immediately. And uh, yeah, uh, after dinner we'll. Try to start another stream, this time for Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, since we weren't able to do that before Sunday. And yeah, let's see. Next week, I, I have my schedule again for when I have to work. I have tomorrow uh, I have tomorrow off. Or was it tomorrow? Yes, it was tomorrow. Uh, then the day after, I have a late shift, so just not able to stream at all. And then night shift, two night shifts after that. Typically there's a day of rest in between, but apparently not uh, this time. But it does mean that uh, we should be able to do at least one early stream in the afternoon instead of the evening. That's it, all right. There you go. Now we will up my voice. <laughs> So yeah, we can do another stream of MDK2 uh, in the afternoon of, let's see, it's Sunday, of course. Then, uh, let's see, yeah, Wednesday, it will be, we should be able to do, uh, we should be able to maybe not finish up MDK2, depending on how long the levels take, uh, but we should be able to get close at the very least. What can I only hope? All right. Uh... Yeah, other than that, things were mostly successful today with the with, with the capture card managing to work for once. I, for once, I say, but I got it to work before. It was just being iffy today. But uh, yeah, with that all said, let's start the raids and start the thanks. Thank you, everyone who's been watching now or later. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Atreus, under your new name, uh, Sir Sam, or... <laughs> That's going to take a bit of you know, getting used to. Uh, Hobo Rutini, thank you for watching as well. And as always, thank you, uh, Drakir. You're always welcome, my friend. And yeah, more MDK2 when we can. And after we're done with that, we'll be moving on to Rayman 3. Yay! But for now, thank you all again. And until next time, have a nice day. And until then. Be safe, folks. And watch out for seagulls.